Hey folks, uh, King here. In, in this video, um, I want to take a trip back, back to the 80s. Um, everybody in their lives has a certain year where it was their favorite year for whatever reason, you know. Um, things in their life were good that year, money was good that year, you know, romance was great that year, life in general was great that year. Everybody has a favorite year, and for me personally, my favorite year was 1985. Uh, I was, I had just became a drummer in 1985. I had just took up the drums and was teaching myself how to become a drummer in 1985. And I, was, I became a freshman in high school, so I was just starting high school. Um, I had more friends. I had a girlfriend for the first time in 85. All those great things happened in 85. And I was going through my record collection and I was amazed at how many albums I have in there from 85 that are my favorite albums that I still listen to this day that were released during the year 1985. So for the hell of it, in this video, I just want to show you some of my favorite albums from 1985. And knowing me, without a doubt, it's going to start with this one. <laughs> this came out in 85. This started the drummer in me, Phil Collins, No Jacket Required. Say what you will about his songwriting, say what, say what you will about his singing, Phil Collins is a goddamn great drummer. It's just an awesome drummer. Fantastic. And, he, I mean, I when it came to drums, I first noticed Stuart Copeland. Stuart Copeland got me looking at the drummer and what the drummer does. But going to see Phil Collins in June of 1985 at the Cal Expo Amphitheater during the No Jacket Required tour, uh, the song he opened with was, was I Don't Care Anymore, and he came on the stage by himself, he played his white drum set and played the intro beat, the tom pattern to I Don't Care Anymore, just him by himself, and it was so loud, and the PA was just so deep and loud. I was moved from the very first hit of the toms uh, from Phil Collins, and from that moment on I had to be a drummer. Um, I had to learn how to play. There was no doubt about it in my mind, and you know he inspired me to play drums. I mean, I still go to his records and live videos uh, for inspiration. I mean, he still to this day inspires me because he's such a good drummer. And this album came out in January of '85. Uh, I didn't buy it until like I think April of '85 because of the songs of Studio. Uh, at the time, I was into R&B music, and the Studio has a very R&B influence song, so so No Jacket Required was one of the bigger was the biggest record of 1985, and one another record without doubt that had a huge influence on me was The Power Station. <laughs> the Power Station uh, released their only album in 1985. This is a spin-off band, uh, uh, bass player, guitar player from Duran Duran. We have Robert Palmer on vocals and uh, Tony Thompson, drummer of Chic, playing drums on Power Station. This was an, also a huge record for me. Uh, I remember the videos came out on MTV and Bang a Gong and Some Like It Hot were my favorite songs uh, from that year. Uh, I was never, at that time, I, w I was a closet Duran Duran fan. Because <laughs> back then, uh, only Duran Duran fans I knew were girls. I didn't know any guys that liked Duran Duran. So I, I secretly did like Duran Duran, especially um, New Moon on Monday I liked. I liked Hungry Like the Wolf. I liked The Reflex. Um, but when this album came out, uh, I said, to hell with Duran Duran. This is a badass album. And... It is still one of my favorite albums to, to listen to, especially if I had a few beers and I'm buzzed and I just want to hear some fun music. I love throwing this album on. Um, it, I mean, it, I don't know if it's aged well, but I love this album and I still listen to it and it still inspires me. I love Tony Thompson's drumming on this album so much, especially the song uh, Get It On, Bang A Gong. I, I, I love what he does on the drum set on, on this entire record, but especially that song. Um, it's such a, he's such a great drummer, and this is such a, a, a badass record. Um, 
I've, I've loved it since I was 15. Uh, and in fact, I was just spinning it later tonight before I even filmed this video. And it, it still moves me. It still entertains me. It still gets me dancing. It's, it's a fun record. All right. Without doubt, one of my favorite records of 1985. I still listen to it. I still love it. It is Tears for Fears, Songs from the Big Chair. And... Yeah, I don't have to tell everybody the great, the big songs that came off of this album. Everybody wants to rule the world and shout and um, head over heels. And some good songs, Mother's Talk. Uh, but my favorite song on here, is, without a doubt, is The Working Hour. Such a gorgeous song. Uh, the sax solo and the keyboard intro. Uh, and then the, that great drum rhythm comes in. And some great lyrics from this band. Uh, the Working Hour is actually my favorite song on this record, but the hit singles were very good were very good songs as well. My best memory of this album, and it will stay with me till the day I die, um, my family, we took a summer f a family vacation to Los Angeles, and we, when we were there we went to Disneyland, we went to Hollywood, we went to Malibu, um, Alvera Street, and uh, visit some family there as well. Uh, so we were there for four days or so. Uh, I remember we were in our, in our hotel room and one of those, uh, it wasn't MTV, it was just a, an, a, a video countdown show that existed back in that day in 85. Every station had a video countdown, top 10 video countdown. And I remember they played Everybody Wants to Rule the World, the video, on there. And I was sitting there watching TV in our hotel room. And I had heard the song before because my, my oldest brother really liked it. And I didn't think much of it. But for some reason, in the hotel, watching on TV, watching the video, it just grabbed me. That song, Everybody Wants to Rule the World. It just grabbed me. And... I had loved that song ever since that day I was sitting in the hotel in L.A. Uh, when, we, when we had just arrived in town, uh, uh, we were going to get a good night's sleep and then hit Disneyland in the morning. So I'm watching TV in the hotel room. That's, that video comes on, and it, hit, it, it really struck a chord with me. Uh, I finally liked that song. I've heard it before, didn't think much of it. But for some reason in that hotel room, it really struck a big chord in me. And I couldn't get the song off my mind the whole time we were in L.A. And when I came home, I bought the cassette. And, you know, here's the final. It's still one of my favorite songs of all time. Everybody Wants to Rule the World. And this uh, that album is my probably my favorite album of 1985. I think I, I rate this one over No Jacket Required because I love this album. And um, can't get enough copies of it. Another album that blew my socks off in 85 with Simple Minds Once Upon a Time. Uh, I, I love this band. I used to get made fun of in high school uh, by all the all my friends that were guys because they thought it was a f they thought they were all fags in this video. <laughs> and the video I'm talking about is a song for Alive and Kicking. They thought the lead singer pretty much was a fag <laughs> even though he was I just thought he was a good singer. And they had that song from The Breakfast Club that my friends always made fun of. But I really love this album. I love every song on this album. There's not one weak track on this record. And if I had to pick one that I always go to, it would probably be Alive and Kicking. Um, just great memories of watching the music videos. And um, I actually bought this album in 1985. This is the record I bought in 85. Uh, my family went to Old Sacramento. And uh, it was just a tour spot in Sacramento and there was a really old school record store in there and I, I bought this album new in that record store in old Sacramento uh, back in the summer of 85 uh, because I, I love this band so much and when I took it home and uh, I played it on our stereo at home uh, I just fell in love with every song I still love every song on this album and it later inspired me to get the live record from that tour, which is called Simple Minds in the City of Light. Now, I bought this used in a record store in the 90s for like a dollar. This is, this is when everyone was listening to CDs. And it's a, it's a great, it's a two-record set live recording. 
and uh, it comes with a color booklet inside the gate fold so you can and, and it's actually got some really nice pictures in it and uh, 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 they were a great live band a great live band and they were one of my favorites let me see if I can find some better pictures here this one I, I don't know why I always love this one this is a fantastic live record if you don't have it in your collection you might want to give it a chance that you might enjoy it um, and that album once upon a time there's not a bad song on that entire record and, and that album it's like one of those albums. That if I could, if the day I die, if I could, t if I could put it in my casket with me, I would, <laughs> if that were considered proper. But whatever, um, it will still, it will always be one of my favorite albums. But that rec that record, really struck a chord me. Unfortunately, you know, my, my, everyone in my family at the time was heavily into R and B music, and I was alone loving that record. But it, it really did strike a chord to me, as well as this one, uh, Sting's Dream of the Blue Turtles. This was his first solo album. I remember the documentary that followed, which was called Bring on the Night. Uh, I remember being a big fan of that, of that documentary slash film about the, the tour that came from this record. He had left the police and started a solo career. This was his very first album. And... I had just started taking up the drums in 85, and when I saw the documentary about this album, uh, the drummer Omar Hakim really caught me eye. I thought he was the one of the sickest drummers I've ever seen. The guy played some amazing beats. I mean, he could play jazz, he could play funk, he could play rock, R&B, whatever. You know, the guy was a great drummer. I still, I still watch that documentary because I own it on DVD. And I'm still amazed by how he plays. I mean, there's a lot of, I, I admire a lot of drummers, and he's definitely one of them. Omar Hakim, uh, he also drums on this album, but, and was the, the live drummer on the tour. If you watch that documentary, you'll see how good a drummer he is. Um, he was a perfect fit for that band, and he really drove the music. I think I wouldn't have cared for this record if it wasn't for Omar Hakim's drumming, especially on the song uh, Fortress Around Your Heart and the remake of the police song Shadows in the Rain. Omar, Omar Hakim just wails on the drums on those tracks, as well as you know, the hit single If You Love Someone Set Them Free and, and uh, Children's Crusade. Um, I mean, the whole band plays fantastic, but it's Omar's drumming that always draws me, draws me to this record because he's such a great drummer and um, he did a marvelous job on this album. It's one of my favorites. Um, I, I still go to it and get very, very inspired. Um, so Omar Hakim, is, because of this album, was one of my favorite drummers. All right, next up is Talking Heads. And um, I keep forgetting the name of this record, even though it did come out in 85, Little Creatures. Uh, God, I, I don't know why I can't remember the name of this record. Little Creatures. Um, I remember the videos uh, from this album. And the video that I remember the most was And She Was. Because I've never seen a video quite put together the way it was. Some great special film effects uh, during that. Uh, kind of a stop motion thing. I, I don't know. It, it it was a picture of the lead singer running with all this cool stuff in the background going past. It was a fantastic video. And I loved the song um, Road to Nowhere. I loved the chorus vocals in it. it. It was such a great song. This is a fun record to listen to. I've always loved the Talking Heads. Uh, uh, my favorite live album is Stop Making Sense. Uh, but this was a fun record to listen to in 85. All right, I gotta show some Rush. <laughs> And what the, I showed this in my last video when I was answering uh, Lazarus's thread for Inner Sleeves, because I love the way the Inner Sleeve is put together in this album. But this is, but if you just judge by the music, this is a good album. I'm going to see Rush tomorrow night. As I'm filming this, it's going to be one in the morning, uh, the 15th of November. So I'm going to sleep in because I don't have to go to work tomorrow, and you know I'm going to wake up. 
probably around 10 a.m., take a jog, and then shower, eat a good meal, and then head up to San Jose to go see Rush and, and concert. And they're playing songs from this album on this current tour. One is called Grand Designs, which is has to be one of my favorite songs on this album. Um, I love the keyboard era of Rush, because this is really when I discovered Rush, was the song Big Money. I, I saw it on MTV, and I was just getting into drums, like I said, in 85, and to see Neil Peart, or Peart, or Peart, however you say his name, see him on that Monopoly board playing his Red Tama kit was just all I needed to be inspired. Um, it made me really want to be a, it, it introduced me to progressive drumming, and I love the keyboard era of Rush because I found that music so exciting. Uh, of course, I later discovered the back catalog of Rush, the early records. Uh, but the keyboard era is really what sparks my excitement about Rush. And um, I, I, don't get me wrong, I love 2112, I love Fly By Night, that whole record, <laughs> and their first album, and all their current records. But the keyboard era of Rush really sparked my interest to begin with. and. And it still does. There's another song on site too called uh, Middletown Dreams, which is also a favorite of mine. Very keyboard heavy song, but such atmosphere on it. And this is such a fun album to listen to. A great record for 85. <laughs> and level 42, World Machine. Um, the one song, obviously, is a song called Something About You. Uh, I, Being a freshman in high school, I remember... I used to sing that song I used to, when I was walking in the halls going to my classes. I loved the melody of that song. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know much about the band because I only liked the one song. Um, it's not until I joined the vinyl community and started uh, buying older records that I bought this album and then I finally heard the entire record, every song on here, besides Something About You. And this is a really good album and from a really great band. And... Um, and uh, Mark King is such a killer bass player. And if you don't know who Mark King is, it's this gentleman right here. Well, let me see if I can get the light right. It's this gentleman right here. He is such a phenomenal bass player. And that song, Something About You, was one of my favorite songs in my freshman year in high school, 1985. <clears throat> Another one. This is going to be a long video, unfortunately. Um, dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. Who didn't own this fucking album? <laughs> it was such a good one. Uh, Money for Nothing, Walk of Life, uh, So Far Away, and the, the title track, Brothers in Arms, which had a, such a cool video. One of my favorites in 85. Um, I love listening to this album, and it sounds great on my stereo speakers. Such a good, such a good album. And when they played it on Live Aid with Sting doing the intro, the M I Want My Own TV intro, it, it, was, it was a great moment. So, spectacular record. Uh, Pete Townsend's uh, White City. I love this for the one song called Give Blood. And uh, one of my favorite drummers on here is, is, goes by the name of Simon Phillips. He is a drummer. I think he's a drummer on the whole record, but especially what he does on the song Give Blood. I remember seeing the live video on MTV, and it just blew me away. The big single from here that most people know is uh, Face to Face. Uh, Face to Face, excuse me. And, um, and David Gilmore from Pink Floyd actually plays on this album as well, and joined uh, Pete Townsend with some of the live shows to promote this record, so... This is a great album. Uh, besides the two songs I mentioned, the, the whole record is I thought was really good. One of my favorite albums in my collection. I don't really go to it very often, but when I do, you know, I, I just I listen to it in its entirety. I, I really do enjoy this album. And when, <laughs> my all-time favorite John Cougar Mellencamp record is Scarecrow. God, do I love this album. I own it on a cassette. I bought it in 85 because I love the song Scarecrow. And uh, I love the I love the song uh, Small Town. Didn't really care much for uh, R O C K in the USA, but when I bought the cassette, I I discovered songs like Minutes to Memory, uh, Between a Laugh and a Tear, Rumble Seat, uh, Lonely O Night, 
was really the song that hooked me first because I, I, he performed it on the MTV Vis uh, Video Music Awards with his band in 1985. And I thought they did such a great version of that song. And it was always one of my favorite videos to watch on MTV because I love the song Lonely O' Night so much. And uh, when I bought the cassette, I fell in love with damn near every song on this album uh, because it's such an enjoyable listen. And uh, I think this, this is, to me, was his best album. And um, I've always enjoyed uh, John Mellencamp's records. And without a doubt, this is my favorite. And it came out in 85. As well as this one, I, I almost wasn't going to include it, but why not? Uh, um, John Fogarty's Center Field. There's a lot of songs on here I do like. And I always loved the back picture of this, of this album. I thought that was such a cool album. I am no baseball fan in any way. I'm not, baseball is my least favorite sport because I think it's so boring to watch. But the song Center Field, which is synonymous with baseball, I really do love that song, as well as Rock and Roll Girl and The Old Man Down the Road. I discovered this album before I even knew who CCR was, and which is weird because my mom and dad owned a lot of CCR records when they would when they were young when I was a baby. Uh, they were younger, they would throw house parties and invite all my aunts and uncles and they would all get drunk and listen to CCR till the wee hours in the morning. And it wasn't until I heard this album, I thought, well, I heard Old Man Down the Road and Rock and Roll Girl. I thought, oh, that voice sounds familiar. Well, duh, because it was cranking through the house back in the day. Okay, another big album from 85 was In Excess, Listen Like Thieves. Man, was this a good album. I loved this record to death. What You Need was my favorite song of that year. I didn't care who knew it because <laughs> I loved the song so much. As well as the song Listen Like Thieves and Shine Like It Does. Um, the lead singer of this band, Michael Hutchins, and um, I'm sure you guys know who he is, but if not, it's this guy right here. This guy right here. Um, Always loved his voice, and always loved his voice with this band. Uh, In Excess uh, recently confirmed that they're breaking up. And, and, I mean, after Michael Hutchins died, I think it was in 97, uh, they've got a few singers that take his place, and they were never the same. And it's too bad, because they're a great band. I, I, I got the opportunity to see them on the X tour. And they were fantastic, uh, just fantastic. One of my favorite concerts of all time that I went to. And this is a good album, really good album. And they were such a good band, and they wrote such great hit songs. And, th and that, was an, that was an awesome record for its time. Okay, for all the metalheads out there, I had to show this one. Uh, Made in uh, Live After Death, um, great live album. Um, <laughs> Ace is High, Two Minutes of Midnight, The Trooper. Flight, Flight of Icarus, uh, Hello Be By Name, Wrath Child, 22 Assatiable uh, Avenue, excuse me. Uh, such a good album, and one of my favorite Maiden album covers. Um, that's just so cool. Uh, when I was going to high school, I hated all the fans of Iron Maiden in my school. <laughs> Therefore, it made me hate the band because I hated the, the kids that liked Maiden in my high school. Um, where I went by uh, the side of the school or the end of the school was a, a set of train tracks. That's where all the Maiden fans would go to smoke weed or cigarettes. They would cut class and go there and smoke weed and cigarettes. And they all had the Maiden t-shirts back in the day. And it had they saved them and collected them. Um, maybe they might be, I don't know if they'd be worth something, but they'd be cool, definitely cool to have. Well, I knew a lot of those kids and they were just all bullies and assholes. And now that I think about it, I, I think they just wore them for the shirts. I think if you asked them anything about Maiden, name all the band members, they probably couldn't. <laughs> they were just bandwagon fans that just liked wearing the t-shirts. But I have to admit, I mean, as much as I hated fans of Maiden back in 1985, I did love the music. And I'm really glad to have this album set and as much Maiden albums as I can get my hands on. They're so fun to collect. And another favorite in Heidi's Eyes was Howard Jones. And he came into this album, Dream Into Action. 
I always loved his songwriting. My favorite song from Howard Jones is a song called Hide and Seek, which was on the album before this, which is called Humans Lib. Uh, but on here, Things Can Only Get Better is such a great song, as well as um, Life in One Day, No One Is to Blame, which was eventually remade with Phil Collins a year later. Um, and the song Look Mama. This was a fun album for its time. I wouldn't say every song was good, uh, but there was some good songs on here, and um, I always liked the way um, he wrote. The way he wrote was really catchy, some really catchy pop songs. Really admired his playing. I loved him as a, as a keyboard arranger. Um, what he wrote, what he did for keyboard, I thought was really, really cool in 85 and in the early 80s, so one of my favorite albums. All right, I'm going to end it with this one because this is a long-ass video. This video is too long, um, but I enjoyed doing this. Uh, Paul had Paul Hardcastle, 19, which is a song about the average age of a soldier that went to Vietnam. Um, what can I say? I mean, <laughs> this is one of my all-time favorites. Um, uh, me and my oldest brother really loved listening to the song back in the day. We would watch the video on USA Night Flight which was a late night video TV show that showed, um, I remember they showed the, uh, uh, the band version of Girls on Film from Duran Duran, and they would show this video a lot, which I didn't understand why, because there was nothing dirty about the video for 19. I think it was just the subject matter. Um, it wasn't considered a, a, a easy thing to talk about on daytime television, so that's the only time you can catch the video was late at night, but I always loved the song. Uh, 19 by Paul Hardcastle. Uh, having a couple of uncles that were Vietnam vets, uh, that was a very special record to me. Well, anyway, that's going to do it for King. A uh, really long video about 85. And the biggest thing in pop culture that exists in 85 was this. And I remember seeing this on television, and it, it, it it's going to be the best concert of all time. And... I remember where I was when I was watching most of it. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see the whole thing. I got to see Queen play live on television. That was fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I got pulled uh, from watching the whole thing on television because my cousin treated, wanted to treat me to a movie, and we end up seeing this movie, <laughs> uh, Back to the Future, and, and instead of watching the entire Live Aid show. I watched like an hour to two hours, went to go see this movie, came back and watched the rest of the show. So, um, some of my best memories of 1985. Thanks for hanging out with me this long. I know this is a long video, but hey, I had a great time talking about 85. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you in the next video.